Hello, Penny here. Today on my garden podcast. Right, so I've prepared a hole. I'm going to put in it some of that lovely muck stuff that you can get in a bag. I've got some of that. It stinks, but it feels it's like a good stink. And I've been a little bit not wanting to get in the garden, but you know, I regret that too. It's like the bloody best thing for you, isn't it? Okay, so I'm a bit late. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a theme, isn't it? It's my birthday at the beginning of April. It's now the middle of June and I'm literally just about to put the beautiful rose gift that I got from my sister-in-law, Freya, big shout out to Freya, keen gardener herself, um, in the ground. And I've been keeping an eye on it to see what it does, what sort of plant it is. I've also looked up a word um, which I hadn't come across before. I'd heard it, but I didn't need to apply it. And that is floribunda. So this particular rose is a floribunda, which I think is a gorgeous word, which I believe to mean bush. It doesn't climb, it doesn't shoot tall, it just bushes out at some point. So we're looking at this lovely floribunda and it's got a label on it. Um, This is where my regret that I haven't brought my varifocals with me. Okay, uh, it's a Rosa Mundi. Rose, basically, shrub. Large crimson with splashes of pink and white, midsummer flowering, a neat round habit. Why don't they speak normally? What's a round habit? A neat round habit with dark green leaves, height and spread, about 1.2 metres, brackets, four foot. Anyway, let's look at this bush to be. This bush to be is currently in a pot, a black pot, and now I have a concern, a major concern that it is stuffed full of slug eggs. And now is the time to, to have a look. So I'm gonna pot it out, I'm gonna tap it out onto the, well, it used to be an art mat actually. The kids used to do arts with it. Arts, arts and crafts sort of thing. And now I've, now they're teenagers and barely speak to us. Um, we've decided to use it in the garden. It's quite handy. You know, when you get the soil out of something and the soil it inadvertently puts it into the grass and then anyway, you can't get it out. We've got the mat, the arts and crafts mat. Right, yeah, stuffed full of slug eggs. So I'm gonna do the the right thing and kill them by smashing them and squeezing them between my, oh my word, it's like a, it's like a bloody nest. (gasps) Oh, look at that, yellow round eggs, which all, when you squeeze them, are juicy inside with slug, slugs to be. Not anymore then, aren't they? Not in my rose. Not in my floribunda. No, thank you. So they're actually coming out quite nicely. And those are going to go into the green bin that the council takes away. The roots aren't particularly healthy, I have to say. As in, they're a bit like tiny spaghetti, you know, like rice noodles, as opposed to nice, chunky um, roots. But hopefully that will change. I'm going to put it at the back of the bed of the Jasper Memorial bed. And it's gonna go between the really nice salvia, the hot lip salvia and, oh, now, I'm gonna say phlox because I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that's phlox. It tends to die back over the winter and you think, oh, that's had it. And then by the time it, June is around, it's looking like a meter tall. So I'm a bit worried about this floribunda. It's looking a bit sad. And the, the bush element of it, so the roots aren't that buoyant. And it has been playing host to all those slug eggs. Ugh, yuck. Um, oh, look, one more. Come on, we can do it. We can get it rid of it. But also the top bit of it, uh, it's been besieged by green fly, which I've sprayed once. The heads on it aren't really very happy at all. The rose heads, the buds. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to deadhead what's come through already. And they are nice, quite nice pink um rose heads what do you call them buds no bloom blooms it's been a while I'm sort of out of the language of gardening at the moment uh yeah but I'm not I'm not convinced this rose is going to see come through and I don't know why I'm feeling a bit like lack of confidence at the moment in gardening and my abilities because we've had quite a few you know false starts with stuff that you think is going to be amazing like the um pampas grass the jumbo pampas grass major which i was hoping would be really strong and into its stride i put it in a pot and i think i got it a bit pot bound 
because I couldn't decide where to put it. Um, I made sure it was dry enough. I made sure it had enough water when it needed it, that sort of stuff. And I, I still don't, I don't know, I kind of lost my confidence a bit with a few things like that that haven't really turned out. It probably doesn't help that I didn't put this in the ground straight away. But hey, that's life, isn't it? You know, life gets in the way of stuff, doesn't it? And the key is to not blame yourself. Um, yeah, blame everything else. Blame all the tools. Yes, it was the bad tools. So, <laughs> right, we've got some nice buds coming, which have got good pink petals in them. They're very tight, really tight, tight ball, as it were. Um, I'm going to take this label off because it's all a bit twisted round. And I'm going to attach that in a better way with a bit more of a wire so I can see it. It won't get in the way when I put it in the ground. Right, okay, let's get on to putting it in the ground business. Oh, no. See, some of these buds have just rotted and I don't know why. Is it because it was too wet? Too cold? Not enough sunlight? Oh, la, la, la. God, it's thorny. Blimey. Right, okay, well, that's looking a bit healthier. It's a bit smaller, but it's certainly a lot healthier. I don't know why green fly like roses. It's like full of spikes, isn't it? And thorns. Anyway. I sprayed it once with chemicals. I don't really want to do it again just yet. Right, so I've prepared a hole and I'm going to put in it some of that lovely muck stuff that you can get in a bag from the garden centre. So I've got some of that. It stinks, but it feels, it's like a good stink. You know, it's a healthy stink. You think, yeah, that's got some good stuff in it. So, uh, and then we can put it in the ground. Um, I've also got some rose feed. I could do that, but I think the manure is probably enough for now. Give it a good watering and kiss it goodnight and hopefully it'll, it'll, look, it'll look better in the morning. Right, now this is a bit tricky because right at the back of the bed, it is quite mosquito-y. So my sort of second regret of the day is wearing shorts. Uh, it's quite sunny now. It's quite a nice June day and warm. That's the main thing. Right, let's offer up the root ball. Is it gonna go in? Yep, it's a bit low, but that's okay because what we'll do just plop some of this gorgeous stinky muck you kind of want to say it with a Herefordshire accent don't you Ooh, right let's see how she fares Rosa there you go Rosa my mum used to have a neighbour called Rosa Rosa was from Austria and I dare say Rosa had a story to tell about why she ended up in the UK but because I was seven at the time I didn't care I wasn't interested but I would be now Good old Rosa, she had a beautiful accent. I think she wowed my mum over because my mum's slightly, uh, maybe say, um, I don't know, not that welcoming of foreigners. But I think Rosa's charm, and I think she had a sparkly waistcoat. I think that helped as well, that she was quite fashionable and stylish. Uh, my mum was quite impressed by Rosa. Anyway, won't go into that. That's another story, isn't it? That's a, another podcast. Okay. And I've been a little bit not wanting to get in the garden, but you know, I regret that too. It's like the bloody best thing for you, isn't it? It's the best thing for you. It reminds you that everything's all right, apart from the pampas grass and maybe the floribunda that your sister-in-law got you as a present. Oh, right, now then, that's a good spot. It's really sheltered. So it's got the protection uh, from wind and, you know, harsh blasts from the salvia on its right hand side it's got a bit of protection on the left hand side it's got lovely food to eat to eat you know what i mean i didn't do very well at biology when i was at school it um it really foxed me in fact i took my biology exam at home when i was doing my gcses because i'd broken my arm like an idiot like my right arm, couldn't write. And so the biology teacher came round to dictate, so I could dictate my notes, my answers to her. And I didn't have a clue. You know, it's one of those subjects where I just didn't, I didn't have a clue and I didn't care. So those two elements, it's just, it, when it was embarrassing having to say out loud, um, uh, photosynthesis? Mm, osmosis? Is that it? it was my, and she just looked at me and she couldn't say, she couldn't help me. And she just had to sort of smirk at my ineptitude. I got a D. To any exam, I got a D in. 
But um, yes, yeah, so anyway, the plant can eat the manure if it wants to. I think that's okay. Right, I'm gonna give it a good drink. Although the root ball was nice and wet when I put it in, it probably just needs a bit more. And I think the good thing about um, giving it a drink is that it helps with the any air bubbles, any air pockets that you might have inadvertently put in there. And if you've got roots trying to grow into air pockets, it's not going to be able to, to grow. So you need a really good tight soil base around it. And by putting, flooding it with water after it's been planted, it means it helps, oh, I don't know, all that water, to, all that soil just to settle down properly and fill in the gaps. Mm -hmm.